Hello audience. Greetings of the day. We will discuss about the radiated emission tests on automotive components. CISPR is responsible for developing and maintaining the standards used to measure the emissions produced by vehicles and their components. ISO TC 22 SC 32 WG3 is responsible for developing and maintaining the standards used for immunity testing of vehicles and their components. ISO standards for the vehicle industry are mainly broken into two categories, vehicle, ISO 11451-20, or component, ISO 11452-20. ISO 7637-20 Most people tend to think of CISPR-25 as a vehicle component emissions testing. The truth is that CISPR-25 is a far more complex standard. The title of the standard is self-describing, it suggests that CISPR-25 deals with radio disturbance characteristics for the protection of receivers used on board vehicles boats and on devices. Hence, CISPR-25 deals with to what level electric and electronic systems affect receivers mounted on automobiles powered by internal combustion engines, boats powered by internal combustion engines, and devices also powered by internal combustion engines, but not for the transport of people. CISPR-25 and CISPR-12 both CISPR-12 and CISPR-25 deal with automobiles, vehicles which operate on land, powered by internal combustion engines, boats, vehicles which operate on the surface of water, powered by internal combustion engines, and devices powered by internal combustion engines, but not necessarily for the transport of people. CISPR-12 deals with the radio disturbance characteristics for the protection of offboard receivers. It is important to remember that CISPR-12, the test methods and or limits, is commonly used for regulatory purposes. The regulatory bodies want to make sure that an item with an internal combustion engine does not cause unwanted interference with TV and radio reception when it drives past or is used nearby, a residence or business. CISPR-25 deals with radio disturbance characteristics for the protection of receivers used on board vehicles, boats and on devices. CISPR-25 is not typically used for regulatory purposes, it is commonly used by the vehicle manufacturers to assure good performance of receivers mounted on board the vehicle. If the radio mounted in the vehicle, boat or other device does not perform reliably, then consumer satisfaction and ultimately product sales could suffer. CISPR-12 would apply to all of these devices since they could affect the performance of nearby, off-board, receivers. However, CISPR-25 should only be considered for items which contain on-board receivers. As an example, a chainsaw with an internal combustion engine, but with no onboard receivers, would need to meet the requirements of CISPR-12, but CISPR-25 would not apply to this chainsaw since it does not utilize any onboard receivers. CISPR-12 radiated emissions measurements are made at either 3-meter or 10-meter test distances. The measurements are normally done on an outdoor test site, OTS or in an absorber line shielded enclosure, ALSE, if the ALSE can be correlated to an outdoor test site, OTS. CISPR-25 has two parts. One part deals with a full vehicle or system test in which the antennas mounted on the vehicle are used to sense the noise generated by the different electric and electronic systems mounted on the same vehicle. This test shows how much noise generated by the vehicle will be introduced into the radio's antenna port, sort of a self-immunity test. The other section of the standard deals with conducted and radiated measurements of vehicle components and modules. Now, we are going to concentrate on the module radiated emissions test section of CISPR-25, 
and only briefly highlight some of the additions needed to support electric vehicles. More specifically, this article will concentrate on the chamber requirements for the standard. CISPR 25 states that the electromagnetic noise level in the test area has to be 6 decibels lower than the lowest level being measured. Some of the radiated emissions limits found in CISPR 25 are as low as 18 decibels, microvolt per meter. This means that the ambient noise must be 12 decibels, microvolt per meter, maximum for a compliant environment. The two radiated emission standards in common use, 95-54EC and CISPR 25, share many common features in their chamber absorber line screened enclosure ALSE, test setup and the results of each are almost comparable. The almost is due to minor and often annoying discrepancies, for example CISPR 25 tests for radiated emissions specifies the ground plane at 0.9 meters from the chamber floor, 95-54 EC specifies 1 meter. It is also possible to do the tests on an open area test site, OATS, instead of a chamber, but the calibration for OATS is significantly more time consuming and consequently more expensive via a test service, hence the preference for absorber line screened enclosure facilities for these tests. The specifications of the artificial network used as load for the 1.5 m test harness are defined in the frequency range from 100 kHz up to 108 MHz. Nevertheless, measurements up to 1 GHz are required. As the radiation characteristic of an antenna, and the test harness acts as such, depends on the source and load impedances. Different artificial network will show different results above 108 MHz. The radiated emissions of the test harness are measured in 1 meter distance in a fixed position of the receive antenna. It is a fact that the radiation characteristic of a wire antenna that's length exceeds 1 lambda shows multiple lobes. Furthermore, the test harness is laid out 5 cm above a metal plate. The coupling to this plate is a major influence to the radiation characteristic too. Minor changes, few millimeters, in the cable layout can degrade the repeatability dramatically. The minimum dimensions of the test bench, also called ground plane, are defined in CLSPR 25, 2.5 meter wide, 1 meter long and it is extended backwards horizontally to be connected to the shielding wall of the absorber line screened enclosure. Reflections from the edges of the test bench interfere with the direct signal, emissions from the test harness. Amplitude and phase of these reflections depend on the size of the test bench. Therefore, different sizes will cause different retest results. The electric field of this test hummus is measured with a monopole antenna in the frequency from 150 kHz to 30 MHz, with a biconical antenna from 30 MHz to 200 MHz and with a log periodic antenna from 200 MHz to 1 GHz. Two field strength measurements are performed. The first one is measured on an open area test site as reference. The second one is the measurement in the ALS. A chamber is assumed to be compliant if the deviation of the two measurements does not exceed of 6 decibels in the frequency range from 70 MHz to 1 GHz. One beneficial consequence of the low measurement frequency is the fact that the chamber sizes are electrically small at these low frequencies, so no significant resonant behavior appears. No limits are given for other frequency ranges. CISPR 25 in its current version, edition 3 of 2008, covers a frequency range of 150 kHz to 2.5 GHz and has broadband and narrowband limits. Broadband includes peak and quasi-peak detector limits. The test levels are not continuous across this frequency range instead being applied only to utilized radio frequency bands as shown in figure.
In CISPR 25 there are five classes of limit that can be applied, often the customer will specify these, if no specific customer requirements, that is for the aftermarket, then the manufacturer often performs the tests and applies whatever limit the European Space Agency passes. We Croydon Services Private Limited are capable to provide you the EMC testing solutions for automotive products as per CISPR 25. You can reach us on www.croydonservice.com or mail us on info at croydonservice.com. Thank you very much.